This is the long-awaited Garmin Phoenix 7. It features an updated design, improved battery life, new heart rate sensor, responsive touchscreen interface, and multi-band GPS technology that aims to drastically improve GPS accuracy during your activities. And all of this makes the Garmin Phoenix 7 the best multi-sport GPS watch that Garmin has ever made. Welcome back everybody. Today is a very exciting day because yes, I have the Garmin Phoenix 7 in my hands. It's finally here. And the Garmin Phoenix 7 isn't the only new thing from Garmin today. They also announced the Garmin Epix Gen 2 that I have here and I actually have an entirely different video about the Epix that you can click on up here if you want to check that out. Uh, to be honest, both the Garmin Phoenix 7 and the Epix are very similar. They're basically the same watch, but there is one differentiating factor with the Epix That'll let you click on the video to find out what that's all about. The new Garmin Phoenix 7 shares a lot in common with the older Garmin Phoenix 6 that I have here, but it also adds a bunch of functionality and updates that make it a much more compelling option by today's standards. Before we dive in though, I do want to thank my sponsor today and that is playbetter.com. Instead of wasting your time with a long ad segment, I'll just go ahead and suggest that you check out the links in the description down below if you're interested in picking up a Garmin Phoenix 7 or the new Epix or even an older Garmin Phoenix 6. And the best thing about playbetter.com is that you get super fast shipping and a crazy long return policy if you decide to change your mind a couple of months later. With that out of the way, let's talk about the options when it comes to the Garmin Phoenix 7 because there are a crap load of options just like on the Garmin Phoenix 6. I think there's actually 16 different models to choose from so yeah there's a lot. Just like the older Garmin Phoenix 6 there are three sizes available for the Phoenix 7. You're looking at 42 millimeters all the way on the left here and that's the Garmin Phoenix 7s. Right in the middle is going to be the Garmin Phoenix 7 and this is actually the Epix but you get the idea same size and then on the right here is the Garmin Phoenix 7X that is the big boy coming in at 51 millimeters and there are a couple of unique things about the Garmin Phoenix 7X to consider and we'll talk about that a little later on in this video on top of those three size options you also have three trim levels to choose from just like before on the Phoenix 6 however they're a little different now so now you're looking at the Garmin Phoenix 7 base model that starts at $699 then you can bump up to the Garmin Phoenix 7 Solar that starts at $799. And if you want to get the best, you can bump all the way up to the Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar and that starts at $899. Interestingly enough, this year, unlike the Phoenix 6, all the options get offline music, Garmin Pay, and mapping. So you don't have to choose if you get the base model, you don't get those things. Now all of the models get that. There's only differences in the hardware. And it doesn't just end there. When we talk about the Garmin Phoenix 7X, there's a couple of more options. So there's the Phoenix 7X Solar that starts at $899. And then there's the Phoenix 7X Sapphire Solar DLC Titanium. That's a long one, and that starts at $999. And boy, is that a lot of money. Uh, is it worth it? We're gonna find out today. Quick interruption, if you're finding this video helpful or useful or fun or anything, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below because it really helps me out. Okay. Back to the video. All right, so as you can see in front of me, I have the three size options. We've got the Phoenix 7S, we've got the seven in the middle here, which is actually the Epix because I don't have a regular seven. And then on the right here is the Phoenix 7X. So for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna focus on one model and I'm gonna choose the 7X because it's got the most features. Now let me bring in my trusty old Garmin Phoenix 6 Sapphire on the left here. And let's talk about what's the same between the Garmin Phoenix 6 and the Garmin Phoenix 7. What do they have in common? First off, in terms of wellness tracking, both devices offer body battery, stress tracking, step counting, calories burned, advanced sleep tracking, respiratory rate, all day heart rate monitoring, and SpO2 levels and more. Basically the same in terms of wellness tracking. And the same goes for activity tracking. You've got the same activity profiles covering all the basics like running, cycling, swimming, etc. Along with a couple of more niche activities like triathlon, surfing, and everything in between. In terms of training tools, the Phoenix 7 comes with the same excellent advanced training tools that we saw on the Phoenix 6. That includes estimated VO2 max, training status, training load, load focus, race predictor, and recovery advisor. And when we talk about smart features, again, they're very similar. The Garmin Phoenix 7 and Phoenix 6 have the same phone notification support, calendar, and weather widget, Garmin Pay for contactless payments, and the ability to download additional features from the Connect IQ store. And finally, both the Phoenix 7 and Phoenix 6 offer offline music that you can play back without having your phone on you, and that's available 
available from MP3 files on your computer, or you can use services like Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and more. Okay, now that we've gone through all of that, as you can see, the Phoenix 7 and the Phoenix 6 are pretty similar, but there are some differences. Now let's talk about the new stuff. All right, so the first change on the Garmin Phoenix 7 is going to be the updated design with thinner metal bezels across all of the models from the Phoenix 7S all the way up to the 7X. These thinner bezels don't actually make room for a larger display as you might think. They actually make room for a much thicker solar ring around the circumference of the watch that actually adds to the solar function, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now the design language of the Phoenix 6 and the Phoenix 7 are largely the same. There's not really a big difference, but there are some subtle changes to the Phoenix 7. For instance, the screws that are located around the perimeter of the bezel have been moved out to the strap lugs, as you can see here. On the Phoenix 6, they're actually located right in the center line of the bezel. On the Phoenix 7, they moved out to the extents of the watch. And in my opinion, moving the screws out actually gives the watch a cleaner, more minimalistic appearance. I like the look of the Phoenix 7 a little bit more than the Phoenix 6, but they're really both great looking watches. Another minor change on the Phoenix 7 is that the start stop button is slightly recessed into the body of the watch now, as you can see here. And there's a little red accent around it on certain models. I think this change is both for looks because it does look pretty cool, but it's also for function because with that raised edge around the button, it means you're less likely to accidentally bump it while you're out in the field. And of course, the Garmin Phoenix 7 is waterproof to a depth of 100 meters, so you can go swimming with it, you can shower with it, uh, you can run in the rain with it, no issues there. Now let's briefly talk about the differences in hardware between something like the Garmin Phoenix 7S and the Phoenix 7X, because there is one really unique difference on the 7X. Interestingly enough, they've actually built an LED flashlight into the Garmin Phoenix 7X. Yes, you heard me right. There's a flashlight built into this watch. To access the flashlight, you simply double tap the top left button here like this. And as you can see, there is an LED flashlight on the top of the watch right under the band. This is actually, I thought it was like a gimmick when I first saw it, but it is incredibly useful. This could be a great backup flashlight to have on you at all times because it's strapped to your wrist. It isn't super bright, but it is definitely bright enough to do various tasks. And uh, yeah, it's very useful. If the power goes out, you've got something right on your wrist. You can also access the flashlight from within the command menu here. If I click in on that, there are four brightness settings and there's also a red LED that you can enable right there. So as far as I know, the Phoenix 7X is the first watch to have a flashlight built into it. It's pretty unique. And if you want a $1,000 LED flashlight, maybe pick up a Phoenix 7X. And like I said before, if we take a look at the Phoenix 7S I have here, there is no flashlight on board. It's only available available on the Phoenix 7X. Just like the Garmin Phoenix 6, the Garmin Phoenix 7 also ships with quick fit bands, and these are just super easy to pop off with your fingernail just by pressing the button on the back there, and they pop right off. The actual band design has changed a little bit on the Phoenix 7. You can see it's much more minimalistic. There's just kind of a, a recessed area in the middle there, whereas on the Phoenix 6, there are a bunch of little lugs or bumps along the way. Another big change on the Garmin Phoenix 7 is going to be the new user interface. It's not totally different to the Phoenix 6. However, they did make a bunch of tweaks throughout the entire UI to make it more useful as a touchscreen user interface. Menu items are a little bit simpler, they're spaced apart a little bit more, and it makes the user interface just a little bit easier to use with your fingertip. Along with the new user interface, of course, there are new watch faces. You're looking at one of the new ones here, but there are a handful of new watch faces to choose from on the Phoenix 7. There's a few hidden features buried within the user interface. For example, I found a new sleep mode that's similar to Do Not Disturb, but has the additional functionality of being able to set a schedule where you want it to turn on and off. You can also enable a simplified watch face and you can enable custom backlight brightness while you're sleeping. There's a couple of additional settings there that can actually save you battery life while you're asleep. So you're not wasting backlight brightness and doing all sorts of things while you're not using the watch. The race predictor on the Phoenix 7 has also been given a minor update that now shows a graph of your predicted race efforts over time, which makes performance improvements easier to see at a glance. Another hidden feature in the Garmin Phoenix 7 is called real-time stamina. And this is actually a custom data field that you can enable within your activities. So if you drop into the data pages of your activities, you can add this data field. And it's kind of similar to Garmin's body battery metric, but instead of being used as a daily metric, it's kind of gauging how much energy you have left within your activity. It can also try to predict how much longer you can run or ride at your current intensity level. And I'll need to do more testing on this data field to see exactly what's going on here. But 
at a high level, it actually seems pretty cool. This is not just a single data field. This is a whole set of data fields you can choose from, from current stamina, potential stamina, distance remaining, time remaining, and a visual stamina gauge that shows it on a little graphical interface. Another new feature coming to the Phoenix 7 is the Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor. This is the same heart rate sensor that we saw release on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, the Garmin Venue 2, the Garmin 400 945. All of these watches have this heart rate sensor already, and in my testing, it's one of the better heart rate sensors I've tested on this channel, right up there with things like the Apple Watch Series 7. Heart rate accuracy on the Garmin Phoenix 7 has generally been pretty good so far. I've only had a handful of runs in to test it, but so far it's looking pretty good and comparable to something like the Garmin Venue 2. However, there were a few highs and lows, some spikes, some drops here and there, so it's not absolutely perfect, but generally it's looking way better than the older Garmin Phoenix 6. I think the difference between the Garmin Venue 2 Plus and something like the Garmin Phoenix 7X is actually going to be the weight, so if you're unable to strap it down really tight on your wrist and it's moving around, you might see some wobbles in your heart rate data, but overall it's a huge leap forward compared to the Garmin Phoenix 6. So the Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor is a welcome addition to the Phoenix 7 in my opinion. All right, let's talk about the display on the Garmin Phoenix 7 and largely it's unchanged from the Garmin Phoenix 6. Both the Garmin Phoenix 6 and Phoenix 7 offer the same transflective display and again the Garmin Phoenix 7S gets a 1.2 inch display, the Phoenix 7 gets a 1.3 inch display, and the big Phoenix 7X I have here has the 1.4 inch display. Even though the display technology is the same, it is readable and direct sunlight and in the dark the backlight is quite contrasty and crisp. One major change to this display though is that it's now fully touch enabled which I find to be awesome. The touch screen on the Garmin Phoenix 7 is super responsive, there is almost zero lag, it's got a pretty high refresh rate on the screen so everything feels, feels really fluid and it's really easy to use. I'm a big fan of the touch screen on the Phoenix 7. And for those of you saying ah I don't want a touch screen on my Garmin Phoenix, it was never designed for that, there's good news for you, you can actually dive into the settings here and you can enable or disable the touchscreen entirely. When you disable the touchscreen on the Phoenix 7, it acts like the old Phoenix 6. Really, you can do everything from the buttons entirely. You don't need the touchscreen, it's just a nice to have. The touchscreen is especially useful though once you're using the mapping and navigation function because you can actually pan around the map with your fingertip and uh, yeah, it's awesome. And we'll talk more about mapping and navigation in a little bit. Another big change on the Phoenix 7 is the addition of power sapphire glass. Previously on the Phoenix 6, you had to choose whether or not you wanted the solar function on the Phoenix 6 Pro, or you wanted Sapphire for added durability. Now on the Phoenix 7, you can have the best of both worlds. We'll talk about the effects of the solar function when we get to the battery segment in this video. Okay, let's talk about mapping and navigation on the Phoenix 7. The Phoenix 7 offers full-blown topo mapping just like the older Phoenix 6. It utilizes topo active maps and they can be downloaded for different regions right through the watch using Wi-Fi. The mapping on the Garmin Phoenix 7 is incredibly powerful. It has waypoint support, points of interest support, and you can generate routes on the fly right from your watch on your wrist without digging out your phone or even being in front of a computer. You can also follow a pre-designed course using Garmin Connect's excellent course designer tool, and that's available within the Garmin Connect app and on the website. The Phoenix 7 is also compatible with the new Ski View maps, and these can be downloaded using the map manager right on the watch over Wi-Fi. These maps support over 2,000 ski resorts worldwide, and they're complete with individual run names showing the run's tracks and also color-coded for difficult level. Another really cool feature to the Phoenix 7's navigation tools is something called Up Ahead. Up Ahead will display upcoming points of interest along a predefined route. This includes course points or points of interest that you set up ahead of time. I could see this becoming valuable in a race environment when you want to know when the next aid station is coming up. One huge perk of the Garmin Phoenix 7 compared to the Phoenix 6 with its navigation tools is the ability to use the touchscreen in the map. This makes using the map incredibly less frustrating than on the Phoenix 6. You can simply tap and drag around the map, you can hold for a second and select a point that you want to navigate to, you can zoom in and out by tapping the plus or minus sign, it's just way better than using it on any other Garmin watch. Not only that, but I think there's a more powerful CPU inside the Phoenix 7 because the refresh rate in the map is way quicker than on the Garmin Phoenix 6. So if you're panning around the map, you don't need to wait for it to load the map, it actually just happens in real time and it feels more like using a handheld GPS device or even your phone compared to some of the older Garmin models 
with mapping. Overall, it's easy to say that at this point in time, the mapping and navigation on the Garmin Fenix 7 is easily the best and you know most robust and easiest to use on any watch that I've ever tried. So if mapping and navigation is the highest priority to you, check out the Fenix 7. The Fenix 7 also comes equipped with multi-band GPS technology, which is similar to what we saw on the Coros Vertex 2 that launched a while ago. This means that the watch can actually access multiple satellite systems simultaneously to acquire a more accurate GPS fix. There's currently three options when it comes to GPS settings in the watch. You can use plain old GPS, just a regular global positioning system. You can also bump up to GPS all on, which uses GPS plus GLONASS plus Galileo and chooses the best signal of the three systems. Or you can bump up to GPS multiband, which is GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and it'll utilize multiple frequencies to get more satellites to get a better accurate fix. Using multiple frequencies means you can pick up more satellites and more satellites equals more accuracy. In terms of accuracy, I can say that the Phoenix 7 is one of the better watches I've tested using that multi-band GPS mode, but oddly, even in the lower regular GPS only mode, it's proven to be way more accurate than my Garmin Phoenix 6, which is a good thing. This is just my initial testing though, and I'll need to continue to test the watch in terms of GPS accuracy to get a longer term view of it and maybe have a follow-up video, so stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about battery life, because that's a hot topic and I feel like everyone's gonna think because of all this new GPS technology, we're gonna get worse battery life. You're wrong. The new Garmin Phoenix 7 has improved battery life across the board on all of the models using standard GPS modes. So on the Garmin Phoenix 7S, which is the smallest device with the smallest battery, you can get up to 11 days in smartwatch mode, up to 37 hours in GPS mode, 46 hours with the solar function if you get enough sunlight, and 17 hours in multi-band GPS mode. Now if we go up to the Phoenix 7, the middle of the road 47 millimeter case model, you can get up to 18 days in smartwatch mode, 57 hours in GPS mode, 73 hours with the solar function, and 23 hours in multi-band GPS mode. If we bump all the way up to the Phoenix 7X, the big boy, uh, we get up to 28 days in smartwatch mode, 89 hours in standard GPS mode, or 122 hours with solar function, and 36 hours in multi-band GPS mode. The solar numbers I just mentioned there assume up to three hours of direct sunlight in bright conditions, so just take that for what it's worth. All in all, Although the battery specs of all of these watches have been significantly bumped up and even on the little Phoenix 7 S here you can get up to 37 hours in GPS mode out of the box and that's going to be enough for most people to run a 100 mile ultra marathon. That said if you bump into that multi-band GPS mode on the smaller watch you're only getting 17 hours so if you want the best accuracy you're going to pay the price in battery. I think for me though in most applications that standard GPS mode or the all on GPS mode is going to be perfectly acceptable and you're going to get Get great battery life out of these watches. Okay, final thoughts on the Garmin Phoenix 7. Who's it for? Is it a good watch? Well, yes, it's a great watch. I think the Garmin Phoenix 7 is going to be a beast of GPS multi-sport watch for most people. With the new touchscreen, the updated heart rate sensor, the improved battery life, it's basically solved all of the minor complaints I had with my older Garmin Phoenix 6. Even though I'm super impressed with the Garmin Phoenix 7 as a whole, I do wish they added a few more features like the LTE function we saw on the 945 LTE that launched a while ago, or even the speaker and microphone that came out on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, because that's pretty handy. That said, I think if you're a hiker, a trail runner, an endurance athlete looking for an amazingly powerful training companion with offline mapping, a touch screen, all the bells and whistles, and you don't really care how much it costs, the Garmin Phoenix 7 is going to be the one you're going to want to look at. Starting at $699 and going all the way up to this $999 Garmin Phoenix 7X, these are not cheap, but you do get what you pay for, and these things pack all the bells and whistles you could ever imagine. Okay, if you found this video helpful, fun, entertaining, anything, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel down below so you don't miss more videos like this in the future. And as always, if you're interested in picking up a brand new Garmin Phoenix 7 or even the older Phoenix 6, check out the links in the description down below from Play Better because they do help support my channel and you don't pay anything extra. They cost nothing extra to you. That is all I've got for this one. This was an exciting announcement. I'm really excited about this one. Now I need to go decide which Garmin Phoenix 7 I'm going to keep, which one I'm going to be rocking moving forward. Is it going to be the 7, the 7X, or even the Epix? I don't know. It's a tough decision to make. Which one do you think I'll pick up? All right, the excitement's over. Cat's out of the bag. I got to go now. Bye. <laughs>